welcome, with his wife Becky, the all-time winningest coach in Spartan football history, Mark D'Antonio! Thank you so much. Big day today, emotional day today, but uh, we'll make it through. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of our former players and our coaches and administrators. You have truly made this a dream come true for the D'Antonio family. So thank you so much. I'll be a Spartan forever. Go green, beat Penn State. Thank you. young man from California. He's a young man with a lot of talent. You talk about potential, he's a guy that certainly has a lot. Tic-tac-toe passing, score! Kotorenko! 90 seconds left on the power play, Kotorenko! My parents both met in Belarus, they got married there, and then my dad came here when he was pretty young, like early 20s, and I uh, was looking for work, and you know, found, found work in New York, and then moved to San Fran, and then my mom came, grew up living in Bay Area, California my whole life, kind of moved around, went to San Diego for a year, and then went back up to California and San Francisco. I love the beach, just going out boogie boarding was kind of my thing, <laughs> it was fun always outside all the time. And then I started playing hockey a little bit and then kind of realized I was pretty good. <laughs> a lot of work in like the garage, you know, those roller hockey pucks, kind of banging up the garage door in our house a little bit. Even with my dad, I'd go like, <laughs> trying to get me to like chase after him. I'm like, oh my God, like you're an old man and I'm like 12 years old. <laughs> a lot of extra stuff, kind of individual skill work away from, you know, team stuff at the rink. When I was 11, we moved to Irvine. This Russian coach, he kind of got to talk to my dad at a tournament one time and liked my game, and they thought I could uh, eventually move down and play with them and, you know, kind of see where it goes. And my parents decided <laughs> it was a good opportunity to kind of grow my game. After Irvine, I played, like, another three years up in NorCal. Like my last year in California, I was traveling a lot for to play for the LA Selects. We would practice on the weekends, so like every Friday after after school, sometimes Thursdays, we'd hop on a plane, fly down to LA, we get picked up by a coach or another teammate, and then we go practice, play games, a couple games on the weekend if we had them, and then head back up Sunday. <laughs> so it was pretty crazy for some 13-year-olds or 14-year-olds to be doing, but I mean, that's kind of the life of hockey in California. I mean, it's pretty intense. <laughs> Not a lot of teams, so you gotta kind of, you know, figure it out. After that, it was we decided that was kind of crazy. So it was either do that again or come up to Michigan and we thought me moving to Michigan and billeting was kind of the better option at that point. My ultimate goal is always to you know, play in the NHL. <laughs> That's kind of the most important thing, I think. My parents were sacrificing everything for They always thought I could make it, and I think my dad always believed in me the most. There's so many teams here, so many ranks, there's so many good players here, like just, uh, it's way more competitive. You know, you're always playing in Michigan, I feel like you get a little bit more exposed and you're playing against better guys, I think, so which also leads to, you know, you getting better. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much. Why don't you go down to the other step here? Are you listening? Yeah, you good. I would describe Xavier as just a loving, great guy, always puts everybody above him, and definitely a family man. First and foremost, I'm a husband. I'm married to Tamia Tillman. I'm a father. 
I'm a brother, I'm a teammate, I'm a player, I'm a student, athlete. The thing that stands out the most is how he's able to juggle everything he has on his plate and all the different roles that he does have to play. Like he's still with his team, he's still with his family. They had a night off and he still, we packed in the car as soon as they got out of practice and we drove home so we could see one of his sister's high school games. Like he, he makes sure he's there for everybody while still handling his business and getting good grades and making sure he does his chores around the house. I don't know how he does it, but he manages to pull it off. I just try to stay present in the moment, whatever I'm doing. I try to stay locked in as much as I can. Uh, if I'm at home, I'm usually not looking at any film or, or working, worrying about any schoolwork because I usually get that done early on. If I'm at the gym, I'm not really worried about my family. I'm just trying to focus on getting better. Or if I'm at school, I'm not really texting my wife or, or watching any film, I'm just focused on schoolwork. So just trying to stay as locked in as I can, uh, determining on what I'm doing. I don't think we really appreciate how much he, he really has done and how successful he, he's been and, and just how he takes care of his business. Uh, he's super low maintenance, but if you really sit back and think about what he has to do on a day in, day out basis for him to even get to practice, I think is very impressive and uh, I give him a lot of credit for that. Playing for USA was an incredible honor. Putting on the USA jersey was definitely a big accomplishment of mine. Super great honor, I mean, amazing to represent your country in you know, a number of tournaments we played. It was very unfortunate though, I like broke my leg before, a couple weeks before the last you know, U18 World Championship and you know, I wasn't able to play in that, but I mean, other than that, it was a great experience for me and you know, playing against the best guys in the country definitely, I think, helped improve my game a lot. I thought that injury uh, was kind of a major uh, turning point in my life because, you know, I never had been injured or been broken a bone or anything in my body up until that point. I was honestly kind of shocked to hear the doctor say, you know, hey, you got a broken leg. <laughs> so I was like, wow. Um, so I kind of sat down with my parents and, you know, decided, uh, you know, maybe major junior is not the way to go. You never know what's going to happen. But at the same time, Michigan State was a great opportunity for me and to earn my degree at the same time in case I do get injured again at some point, even down the road playing hopefully in the NHL or pro somewhere else. I always have my degree to fall back on. Appleton rank oh wide in the yes. far circle, shot goal for Michigan State. Woo. Bonarenko with his first as a Spartan. I think we're gonna see a lot of those from that young freshman. Patrick and I have known known each other a long time and uh, I was fortunate enough to coach him with the U.S. team. So it, it's been a nice process. So I had him two years there and then uh, three years total here. So, you know, five, uh, five out of the last six years we spent together. And, you know, it's been nice to see him, you know, grow up as a man uh, as much as on the ice. Kodorenko off the turnover, in, man the save! Kodorenko buries it on the rebound! I think I can grow my game and help MSU grow as well at the same time. I thought I'd play a lot here. Coming off an injury, and I didn't really know like if some other teams would maybe play me as much. But you know, I had a great opportunity here with some good players like you know Taro and Louis the next year. So I thought I had some great line mates coming in and managed to do pretty well offensively. And you know, just kind of working on every aspect of my game. You know, each year here trying to get a little bit better, and I think that was the most important thing for me. Todorenko whips it to the circle, score. And that's why they keep that trio out there again. Patty and I played together when we were younger for a couple of years and then spread out for a couple of years and then, uh, you know, got to get back together here uh, my freshman year. In two years together there and, you know, going on our third one here is, uh, you know, it's pretty special. I, I consider myself very lucky to, to come here every day and put the uniform on with him. I think on the ice, he's, he's such a strong body, such a physical presence out there, and I don't think guys want to play against him. He has a very strong stick, and the ability to make plays and to score goals is, you know, something other teams are aware of every time playing against him. And then, you know, off the ice, I just think he does the right things, and he might not be the loudest guy in the locker room, but the way he drives himself and goes about himself in workouts and just proves he's a good leader here. Lewandowski with Kodorenko the other way. Kodorenko in, shoots, scores! Patrick Kodorenko!
He's a professional about the way he goes about things. You know, he's, he's there early, he gets prepared, he, he practices real well, he's focused on what we're doing. Um, he executes and that carries over the games. And I think he's a great example for the younger guys. And I think as he's gotten older, he's, he's more apt to, you know, go down on the power play and talk to one of the younger guys. That helps everybody buy into what we're trying to do around here. And you're on, I'm on the other side. Yeah. I've always had a, you know, offensively creative game and I've always been kind of able to produce. Coach Cole, I mean, he's helped me a lot knowing where to be and playing with my defensemen a little bit smarter, right? especially just my awareness and helped me with that aspect of my game for sure. Yeah, I try to give it my all every time I step foot on the court. I try to be as tough and as physical as I can to let my teammates know that in order to win in the Big Ten, that's what we have to do. We have to be the most physical team out there, the most mentally tough team out there. Sometimes I'll get into the game and I'll be so locked in on the game, having so much fun, the crowd, my teammates and stuff like that, that when we do the high fives, we come back around and I see them, it kind of like, boom, okay, this is real world. These are your people that not only you're providing for, but that who you're protecting. And it's, and it's more so like, okay, I see you guys. Give me a second, I'm gonna go into the locker room and I'll come back out to make sure you guys are good type of thing. When I see them, they kind of bring me back into reality. Coming to college, he really focused in on his responsibilities and seeing how he can provide and help not only his family but the people around him. So I feel like just being here has helped him focus in on some of those leadership skills and some of those, we call it, his grown man stuff that he deals with. Overall, I've just evolved into a better person and it doesn't go unnoticed with all the help that I had with the coaches and my teammates, our academic people, the tutors, my wife, everybody put in a lot of effort with me trying to help me be the best person I could be. The thing that has blown me away the most is his academics because the first year that we were together, that was not his strong suit. Once we found out about Yanni, he kind of buckled down and it's just been like a constant growth. But for him to be doing as well as he is in school just blows my mind with everything he has to juggle. Since I got here, she's been my rock. She's been like that one stable person who you know, through the good and the bad, she's always there to cheer me up. And she's always there to encourage me to do stuff. Like, she encourages me to, to stay longer at the gym, or she encouraged me to go back to the Smith and do some more schoolwork and stuff like that. Or she encouraged me to go to class on days I feel like I really don't want to go. She's the person that's my motivator, the person that always keeps me going. Just keep chugging along because it is important, and we both want to have a degree to show Yanni hey, like both your parents went to college because neither of my parents went or graduated. So for me, I want it. And he just has always been super supportive of that. So he doesn't just be like, okay, well, I need you to stay home and raise our family type of thing. He knows it's important and he pushes for it. kind of starting to hit me more now that I'm a little bit older like wow like <laughs> I did all this crazy stuff at such a young age like just for hockey like you know obviously it panned out well, my parents made a smart move I guess you know sending me out here and grateful my parents kind of took that risk I think it definitely worked out for the best playing here in Michigan definitely grew my game and I think playing at USA and then coming here I think has been some major stepping stones in my career the thing I really have liked about Patty is that he's just he's kept getting better year after year after year, and um, you know even coming into his senior year, sometimes guys flatline a little bit, but you know and he kept working on different things and he's become more of a leader. You know one of the captains on our team, and uh, just just done a great job, and it's fun to be around somebody that long and see him progress that much. We were doing the addition over there in Mun, and it's taken a lot of work, and, and we've tried to you know, promote some things outside and, you know, you know what Patrick and uh, Louie have done um, and, and I'll throw Taro in that group. I mean, I thought last year they were the best uh, line in college hockey and um, they kind of have enabled us to have a, a bit of a face to the program and, and, and some excellence and kind of show people the direction we're going. So, you know what, I think their ownership uh, in, in the program is huge and I think, you know, when they come back, 
you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now and they, they see where the program's at and they see where the building's at, they should, uh, they should take a lot of pride in it and know that, that they had a, a huge impact on us getting that done as fast as we did. I'll be coming back here for many more years and I'd love to see how this program can build, build off what we've done these past three years. You know, they've been a grind. I really want to see this team improve to, you know, its full potential. I think the guys here have a lot of heart, a lot of compete. We can play with anyone in the country. We just got to kind of believe in ourselves. And, you know, hopefully when I come back here in a few years, you know, they're at the top of the standings in the Big Ten like we are right now. And I will be coming back here to use that new sauna and the <laughs> new renovation. So, yeah, I'm excited for that as well. I think it's worked out for the best for so far. The big thing about the Smith, they had this wall of uh, academic All-Americans, and that's a huge motivator for me. You have to be an All-American on the court, and then in the classroom, you really have to take care of your business and have over like a 3.5 GPA. Freshman year, I really wasn't playing that much, so I kind of just went about my business on the academic side, making sure that I took care of that. As I got better and better on the court, it kind of made it a lot easier for me to have that goal in mind of being an academic All-American just because my grades are already there now. I just had to pick up the basketball side. And what that really meant was just more and more time in the gym, uh, watching film, that way the game slows down for me and I'm able to break down a lot more plays and stuff like that. So I think that goal is in reach now. When my kids look back at my college, they're gonna be like, okay, well, you're probably an athlete, so you probably didn't go to class. And then when I can show them my GPA and show them the provost award that I won my sophomore year, they'll be like, okay, no, you were, you were a serious student. I can show them like, yeah, I really cared about school. I cared about sports. I cared about my family. And, and these are all things that I want you guys to care about because it'll help you live a successful life. Game two on the weekend, Michigan State versus Minnesota. Last night, it went to the Gophers by a score of four to one. The Spartans did everything except score. They hit posts, they had some open nets. Tonight, they've just got to clean that up a little bit and walk out of here with a win. Chance in front for APAP and a first good save for Mo, and then it comes rocketing back out to neutral where Miller has to chase it down. That's kind of how it was last night as well, where the shot's 9 2 right now, but that was a great A right on Jared Mo. Sammy Walker moving in for the Gophers. Reedy fires and scores! <laughs> Michigan State's been much tighter here in the second period. Gophers did not get a whole lot of momentum off that power play as Landon able to walk all the way down to the dock and the rebound kicks to Kodorenko and he does not miss, tying the game at one with 4.24 left in the second. Minnesota, top line trying to get that mojo back, thrown on target, the Rosberg kicked it out. And he takes the shot, came loose, but Lockwood scores from his knees and Minnesota leads again. Lays it to the middle for Sampo Ranta. He takes the shot, left him in leaning on that post again. The wraparound came out on the opportunity by Zulsdorf, but a shot at the horn does not go. And Minnesota will have to settle for a one-goal lead heading to the third after another late flurry here in the second. Minnesota making life difficult for itself with back-to-back -back penalties. Sasana's shot hits Saliba as he was screening Mo. Once again held at the line. Tired penalty killers out there for the Gophers as they're chasing around on this big ice. The long shot, they score. Sasana finally got one through the crowd in the fifth of the year for the sophomore. Dennis Sasana ties it. On the net, Kodorenko. Lewandowski out there with Nodler in the middle, not Saliba. So a mix up of lines here for Danton Cole. Tommy Miller from the point, fires and scores through a crowd again, and Michigan State takes its first lead of the weekend. Shots in this third period, 10-1 in favor of Michigan State. Senior-led team has come out looking like 
An experienced group. Minnesota for the first time in a while looking maybe a little rattled. Now Walker. That pops out in front. Stevens a chance and the rebound. They score. A bad bounce. And Michigan State leads 4-2, and it's coming apart for the Gophers here in the third. Big missed opportunity for the Gophers here in this third period tonight as three goals for the Spartans earn them the win.